also, I'm a product of District 6. I grew up here, went to Centennial Elementary, and then, let's see, Chapel Hill Middle School, John Evans Junior High, and then Greeley West. But I always knew math was what I wanted to do. I remember as a child watching, there was a TV show called Square One TV that was all math games and songs, and that was my favorite show to watch. And then um, I remember in high school having a very influential high school English teacher. And I just thought, if I could be a teacher like this guy, so that's what I want to do. Went to UNC, went through their teacher program, and ended up back at Greeley West. So. I think it also makes me very passionate so about I want to see kids come out of this district with the same types of experiences that I have or even better ones and now my own children are here they're both at Winograd and and I'm just very passionate about making this district the best it makes me very passionate about making this district the best it can be and not giving up and going somewhere else construct those three segments into a triangle. Now you're gonna have to think outside the box. I'm not gonna tell you how to do this. And I think if you grabbed random students in the hall and asked them, there would, that would be their response to my classes is that they're really tough. But I'm tough and I think the same reason he was tough is he sets the bar high. And you know what, I, you can do things, but to do things there's certain classroom rules you've gotta to follow to set up an environment where everybody can learn and everybody can achieve. And I'm fortunate that I frequently work with what some people would call honors classes, but I love to get students in those classes that have never been in those kind of classes before and say, okay, the bar's the same for you. I don't care what your past is, the bar's the same for you. How are we gonna meet those expectations and push you to achieve? And one of my favorite things is when kids come back two or three years after they've taken my class and say, Wow, I really hated your class when I was in it because you were so tough, but I know now how much I learned and how much I achieved and what I got out of it. Why did you pick that cross point instead of that one? Um, Wait, can you explain why? Yeah. Um, when I did my well, I had my compass and I measured T, S, T. I made my half moon and then I did T and U and I did my half circle and that's where S and T intersected. Okay, so something went wrong. I gotta think through what went wrong. Oh, I know the problem. It's the U that you should have matched up. T should have started right here. Okay. And then when you went to do T U. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. so you should have drawn like that. And I don't know if that's exactly right, but you'll get the idea. It's the same problem. Do you pick that one? Or do you pick that one? When I got into teaching, that was actually probably the biggest stumbling block I had to overcome is that I was good at math and it came naturally. It was really hard for me to step back and say, okay, where are students gonna get stuck? And you know, my first few years of teaching, I was like, well, it's obvious, why don't you just get it? And I think that's probably the biggest growth I've made in all my years of teaching, is, um, is just to really be able to think about where are students gonna get hung up? What questions can I ask to help them through it? I, I think the thing that's helped me most be able to gain that perspective is I've worked a lot for several years at UNC leading professional development workshops for teachers and actually to work with middle school teachers is what I do most in the professional development and to see their perspective and talk to them about what their students do has really changed my perspective and given me extra insight and of course I don't get it right every time but to step back and say what might students think came out of that collaboration with other grade levels not just other high school teachers. You know, I just try and set the bar high for every kid. And in my mind, every kid is an honors kid, regardless of what class I'm looking at. And, and I make no qualms about telling them that. Like, you, you can do the same thing that every other kid can. Sometimes at West, the, the status is the International Baccalaureate IB program. Like, nope, you can do the same things that every IB kid can. And with some kids, it takes more one-on-one. -on -one. With sometimes it takes finding the right hook to 
help them be successful. I remember one student in particular about five years ago in an Algebra 2 class, had been in Algebra 2, had had very little success in math. And we were working on a, a real world problem and he got it. And for the first time, I can just even remember the look on his face, he got it and he jumped in and he grabbed onto that problem and he finished the year with a B in Algebra 2 when he'd barely passed a math class. So I think it's a combination of setting the bar high and keeping it high and then supporting kids wherever they need to be able to reach that bar. You know, I think what's most important for me is when students come back and just say, you know what, I, I was able to use what I learned in your class and maybe I didn't like your class right when I was in it, but I realized afterwards the life skills and the problem solving skills and the things like that that I learned. And, you know, I get that a couple times a year and honestly those are the kinds of things that keep you going, which I think most teachers would probably agree. We're certainly not in this for the money, but those are the things when you know, hey, I made a difference for that person or this kid remembered me and I got invited to their wedding or things like that.